Marlon Briscoe, a.k.a. the magician, number 15 for the Broncos. Listen to this fucking story. All right, here we go. Uh, Marlon Oliver Briscoe, nicknamed the magician, is a former American League football quarterback and wide receiver. In October 1968, after being drafted by the Denver Broncos of the AFL, in the 14th round, by the way, he became the first starting black quarterback in professional American football and established a Denver rookie record of 14 touchdown passes that season. He played professionally for nine years. He's from Omaha, Nebraska, which is amazing that he didn't become an offensive lineman the way they feed those kids that fucking corn out there. He went to the University of Nebraska at Omaha. Okay, now check this shit out. You're like, okay, so his rookie, he set a record of 14 touchdown passes that season, and he played professionally for nine years. Well, how come you don't know about him, Bill? This is why. Briscoe was a 5'10 and 177 pounds when the AFL Broncos drafted him in the 14th round of the 1968 draft at 22 years of age. The Broncos intended to convert Briscoe to cornerback, but Briscoe had negotiated for a chance to compete for the quarterback position. Tell me this isn't a Denzel movie. Let me tell you something, Marlon. I, I know you're a quarterback, but you know, they, you know the guy would have to have a southern accent because he's racist. That's that's how white people handle white racism, was we just make it act like it's all down south. Marlon, I don't think I, I'm thinking you play on the other side of throwing the ball. Maybe you try to knock it down with your jumping ability. On September 29, 1968, after starter Steve Tensey suffered a broken collarbone. Must have been on a dirt bike. And backup Joe DeVito was spotty. Head coach Lou Saban uh, summoned Briscoe from the sideline in the fourth quarter against the Boston Patriots to give him a try. Briscoe's first play was a 22-yard completion. On his second series, he orchestrated an 80-yard touchdown drive. He completed a 21-yard pass and ran for 38 more himself, carrying it the last 12 yards for the score. I mean, tell me that right there wasn't a glimpse into the future of the quarterback position. Uh, A week later, on October 6th, he became the first starting African-American quarterback in the AFL. Briscoe threw 14 touchdown passes that year in just five starts, including four on November 29th against Buffalo. Both are still Bronco rookie records. He threw for 335 fucking yards in that game, a rookie record that stood until John Elway broke it in 1983. I bet they didn't try to make him a cornerback. You can knock it down with your teeth, Jonathan. Uh, and one of only three 300-plus yard rookie games in franchise history. He completed 41.5% of his passes and averaged 7.1 yards attempt. And his 17.1 yards per completion led the American Football League and ranks 18th all-time. He also ran for 308 yards and three touchdowns. Okay, so you would think that this would at least get him an opportunity to compete the next year for the quarterback job. Now, here comes page 20 of the script. Before the 1969 season started... Briscoe still determined to play quarterback like he hasn't proved that he should be in consideration. Discovered that head coach Saban instead intended to use Pete Liske or Lisk, L-I-S-K-E, as the starter. So he asked to be released. He went to the AFL's Buffalo Bills where he was turned into a receiver. Since the Bills already had superstar Jack Kemp, former pro bowler Tom Flores and Super Bowl head coach of the Oakland Raiders later on, and L.A. Raiders, and James Harris, another black quarterback with a more prototypical 6'4", 210-pound frame. Briscoe never played quarterback again. He's like the black Doug Flutie. This is ridiculous. The guy's a winner. But he enjoyed a splendid career. He led Buffalo in touchdown catches each of his three seasons there and in receptions twice. In 1970, he was in the top two in receptions and receiving yards and became an all-pro. Isn't that amazing? Then retirement legacy. He was a successful businessman. Got involved in, uh, you know, the Coke 80s, became addicted, but recovered. I mean, it's a fucking movie. In 2016, the University of Nebraska, Omaha, Briscoe's Briscoe's alma mater honored him by unveiling a statue. Unreal. 
Isn't that interesting? 